Well, I'm not really sure what day it is, but today we're going to cover how to use your mind to get out of a bad situation. I'm going to tell you guys a little story about the most afraid time I've ever been in sparring, the most like legitimately scared time. Usually there's times where it's like, I'm slightly nervous to fight this guy, but then we get in the ring, we, we hit each other, no big deal. But this is the first time I felt like real fear fighting. So rewind back to 2013 at the Swiss Open. I am fighting in the quarterfinal against I think it's Nigeria and I have the game plan ready. I'm watching this guy fight. He likes to fight in the clinch. It seems like he's pretty strong because he's moving the other guy around and no problem. I'll just fight him at range. When I get in the clinch, I'll just lock it up, rinse, repeat, easy peasy kind of deal, right? That's how it was supposed to turn out. So we get up there, uh, we test Hogu's and then I do what taller fighters normally do is I'll cut kick a little bit, flick to the face, kind of keep him on his toes. And so I started the match like that, I did a little cut or I think I motioned or something like that. And he did a left leg fast kick and he hit my arm. When when his leg hit my arms, both of my shoulders dislocated and came back into their sockets. That's when I was like, the whole game plan just went out the window. And so for those of you who don't really spar that much or don't do Taekwondo, know what a fast kick is. The equivalent of fast kick in boxing is a jab. So imagine someone jabbed at you and you caught it with your hand, but there's so much force on it that your shoulder dislocated and came back. That's essentially what happened here. A fast kick is a non-committal kind of feeler like kick. He did that, shoulders out, shoulders came back back in and like the the whole game plan changed my brain was starting to fire and just put together a new game plan right away it was like there's we're not going to exchange in the clinch anymore if we get in the clinch we're locking it up we're not going to play from range anymore because if he counters and i catch one of those that's that, that's probably gonna be the end of the fight those those were like kind of the giant strategy the next immediate setup though was going to be if the second he comes into my distance i need to hit him back as hard as i can so he knows he's dealing with someone strong too. If you're fighting someone who's super strong and you show you get hurt or you show that some kind of weakness, they're just gonna hit you again because, well, it sounds kind of mean for those of you who don't spar, but if you do spar and you're at a tournament, if you can break someone's spirit, then they don't fight you as hard, the, the fight becomes easier. And then you save your energy and move to the next fight and they go home. So it's a win for you if you can break someone's spirit, makes your life a lot easier. That was definitely not what I wanted to happen, but so that's the game plan. So we reset, I switched legs back to my left leg because at the la at that point in time, my left leg off the line and my left leg Pachagi were super strong. And you know, why didn't I throw a back kick? Well, because to throw a back Kick, you need to know the other guy's timing like that you can't just spin and hit a back kick you need to trap it and yet for that you need to know timing etc etc easiest thing i can hit to let this guy know i also hit hard is going to be the, the defensive round kick the body track so i load up left leg back and i remember he starts throwing a triple and it's it's on the third kick where i want to crank and hit him as hard as i can so i throw my full body weight into the kick full hip rotation, full everything. And when I hit him, I'm trying to hit him so hard. Actually, I close my eyes for a split second. And I do have a bad habit, but when I, when I kick, I close my eyes. I don't know why it's just been there forever. My cousin's been like, dude, just keep your eyes open when you hit. So anyway, I, I close my eyes for a split second, but my leg and shin don't really make contact. The first thing that makes contact is my knee hitting his hip. And I think what had happened was he had tried to extend to reach the extra length and he overreached a little bit and my knee hit his hip. And after that, he, he fell on his knees he like yelled out in pain. I was trying to apologize because I felt bad. My teammate in the back was like, don't do that. Don't do that. It makes it look bad. No, I won't, I won't do that. So I kneel down. The minute passes, he's unable to continue. I end up winning the fight off of that kick. And it's not an illegal kick. He was in the air when I hit him, which is why I hit his hip. But what I want to kind of extrapolate out of that moment of great fear was a few things. Number one, I want to reiterate that when you guys are visualizing or if you guys are visualizing, or if you haven't started, I highly suggest visualizing. You guys need to visualize things going poorly. So visualize things like a ref uh, giving you a bad call or phantom points going up on the board with a new electronic scoring hoagie or uh, whatever like coach their coach is berating you with stuff even though you're you're the coach shouldn't be talking to you right and so what you need to do in those situations is you need to practice uh in your mind thinking about what can you control don't think about the stuff outside don't think about the ref don't think about points going up all you can control is yourself and your thoughts and then you want to just pick only the thoughts that help you come up with a plan or help, help you help boost you up so in that situation my mind could have easily went to oh my god what's happening uh, this guy's so strong. I'm nowhere as strong as this guy. And that would have just been a downward spiral. And it's tempting to do that when you're in that situation. That's like a normal human reaction. But in this situation, what happened, my mind immediately went into strategy mode where I was like, okay, we need to not exchange because that's a losing scenario for us. We're going to hit him as hard as we can with our left to let him know we're in the same league. Because if I don't do that, the the, the downside to that of giving way is that he's going to just learn to exchange with me. And I'm definitely going to lose the exchange against this guy because of the strength difference. So go into strategy fight one-to-one -one and 
close it up after. Load up your strongest shot, and if we have to go blow for blow, one for one, at least I'm not taking multiple blows, so I'll be able to last for the rest of the tournament. Like that's all the all of it was assembling in my head, like right when that first hit happened. Even though the game plan changed, even though I acknowledged that guy was stronger than me that day, it wasn't a panic attack. It wasn't, oh my god, what's going to happen? It was like immediately into strategy mode. How do we solve the problem? Uh, and I was very lucky that next kick solved the problem. When you're visualizing, think about things going wrong and think about the thoughts uh, that are going through your head. Anytime there's a negative thought, correct it into a positive one seven times. So that way it undoes the negative one and only keep the positive one. Now, the second thing to keep in mind is it's going to be too much for your brain to do that at one moment. So if you were to take Joe Schmo off the street and then throw him into the UFC against Khabib, there's like way too much stimuli for him to process all of that and be able to think because he's not used to it. But if you take someone who's been to the UFC multiple times already, you've been to a tournament multiple times, you showed up to a, a business negotiation multiple times, the nerves and all that stuff, yeah, the, you still feel nerves, but it doesn't affect you as much and you're able to think more clearly on your feet, more so than if it was your first time. So this is kind of where the expression you need to get good at going to tournaments comes in because all the extra nerves you're feeling, like that stuff can be handled with experience. So as you go into more tournaments, the amount of stress you feel from going to a tournament is reduced. It may not ever go away, but it's definitely reduced. And that leaves more mental clarity for the thoughts and the strategies that you need to actually win. Now, for those of you who are in business or doing sales or in a board meeting, maybe having the experience of going out to meet customers, having the experience to go out into these meetings will slowly reduce the amount of nerves that you feel when you're in there and allow you to think more clearly. Those are the two main takeaways. One is practice things not going your way and fixing your thoughts to positive ones and taking only the ones that help you strategize. And then number two, expose yourself to continuously more stressful situations. So when you are in a situation that is really, really bad, you can keep calm a little bit easier because the amount of nerves that you get worked up from that situation is reduced.